Okay, so far we went through what are trusses and what are their features as well as how can we solve them. We said there are two methods, method of joints and method of sections. There's a description in the lecture notes. Uh, we went through it through the slides as well a little bit. But the best way to learn any of these methods is to apply them in a the real case. Over here we have a pedestrian bridge and uh, we want to analyze this bridge to figure out what is its unknowns knowing some of the applied loads which are our known this is that monkey this is that elevator this is that um, washing machine that elephant that person on the balcony these are all applied loads and we know them like wind load earthquake load the unknowns are the reactions of the structure and in case of trusses we said they're only axial load they're either in compression or they're in tension now if you remember we were saying that we can idealize structures and represent them with a simpler um, structure so this sophisticated connections and all of these have been translated to a 2d structure the applied loads are like this the supports have been replicated with a pin at one end and a roller at another end we mentioned that this is a very common type of support for any bridge uh, because uh, when the lorry or a truck uh, breaks the force exerted laterally will move the bridge and if you have two fixes at the end it might damage the bridge members so we allow a little bit of flexibility by putting a roller at one end as well as as you can see most of the bridges are uh, either iron or steel and then due to uh, thermal expansion they will either get shorter or longer and this can be accompanied by a roller as well because if you prevent and you resist that expansion it might again damage your building the word the simplest case scenario is that it will um, remove its painting and you don't want to spend more money to paint the bridge again every single month so let's analyze this uh, building as our uh, as the tutorial question uh, first we will go with method of joints so let's draw this voila now I have the drawing of the same bridge I have a pin support here a roller support here the applied loads which are known to me I know that this P although I'm putting P but I know it can be 10 kilonewtons, 5 kilonewtons. What are unknowns are the reactions of my supports as well as what is internal in every single one of these members. I'm missing this member, so let me add it as well. Now, do you all agree that this is a pin support, so there will be a reaction like this? I'll call it RAY, meaning the reaction of A in Y direction. And then there will be this, I'll call it RAX, meaning the reaction of support A in X direction. The same thing happens for the roller as well. Let's call it RDY. Or let's call it RD because it doesn't have any other component. Okay. If you remember, the first step was to have a guess of which members will be in tension, which members will be in compression. If you remember this, this looked like that happy face that we were saying. If there is a beam and then we apply some loads, let's say here and here, the bottom bit probably is under tension, the top bit probably is under compression. So if you replicate this and compare it to this, I can say the bottom bits, there is a high chance that they're under tension and the top bits are under compression. And we said the sign of compression and tension simply is if it's compression, is getting compressed, is pushed, so it reacts the other way around and this is compression. 
if it's under tension it gets pulled so it reacts and it shows it like this tension so if the bottom bits are under tension I'll just simply put tension signs and if the top bit is under compression I simply put compression signs I think these bits if these two comes down this will move down and it will get closer to this so I am guessing that this will be compression and because it's kind of symmetric and the loads are applied in a symmetrical way there is a high chance that this will be compression as well again I might be wrong but I think that is happening now if these two are pulling it down probably is pulling this down as well so this get elongated as well as this so let me put tension signs here and here tension and tension and the middle one probably if this is getting down this will pull this as well so this will be elongated as well so I'll put tension sign as well it's just a guess um, I'm not 100% sure but if it's negative, then the signs that I've considered are wrong. Again, this is for tension. And this sign is for compression. This was the first step. Now, I have to make sure that the whole structure is in equilibrium. The first step to do any analysis in any truss is to forget that it's a truss and consider the whole system as a solid body, something similar to a beam. If you consider the whole system as a solid body, what do you have? You have two reactions, two forces, and another reaction on the other side. Can I write uh, equilibrium for this? Yes. Imagine I have a solid body, which is like this, solid body of steel, doesn't matter I have a pin connection here one force here one force here and then I have a roller here can I figure out what is R A Y what is R A X and what is R D isn't this the same thing I'm considering the whole entire thing is solid and I'm just trying to figure out what are these forces for the, for the first step, because you're considering the whole thing is solid, then all of the equations of equilibrium applies. So, summation of all forces in x direction equal to zero. This is my positive direction. In this case, I have only Rax. So, Rax equals to zero. Because in that direction, I only have one force laterally. Summation of all forces in y equals to zero going from bottom to top is positive for me now I have RAY which is positive in this direction I have a P here so minus P Y negative because it's against my direction another negative P again similar to that negative to my direction and then a positive RD there's no other force as well equals to zero Mm -hmm. So from this, I can kind of conclude that the summation of this two equals to two P's. Yeah, minus P, minus P, two P, R, D, R, A, Y. Doesn't mean that they're equal, but it just shows that the summation of these two equals to two P's. I have another equation to help me figure out one of these and then solve the other one. And what is that? Summation of all moments along any point equal to zero. Again, if you remember in previous tutorial, we mentioned that whenever you want to get a moment, get it through the moment that it gets rid of most of the unknowns that you have. If you look at this solid frame of this, where are the most unknown? Over here. At point A, majority of unknowns exists. So I'm getting a moment along point A. What does that mean? It means that I'm getting rid of these two unknowns. Because if you remember, moment was if a force is applied and there is a pin here, this force will exert a moment. And then if I have a distance from here to here, 
moment was force times distance. If I get the moment along point A, these forces to point A, their distance is zero. So they won't generate any moment. So it will help me. But what about this P? This P, which looks like this, toward this point A has a distance. And that distance is L. And what will do that? What will that cause? A moment in this direction as you can see I follow the arrow of the force and with the center of that point that I'm considering the moment which is point A so P going around A will be clockwise my direction of positivity is clockwise as well so it will be positive P times L the same thing happens here as well but this time because the distance is bigger I will have a bigger moment it's the same force and if I see with the center of A I go around it again you see is clockwise so it's positive P times now why is it bigger moment because the distance has doubled so the distance of this point perpendicular to that point is two L's so times two L and then look at here, I have an RD here, which has a distance to point A. But this time, following the arrow, with the center of A, I can see I'm going anti-clockwise. So it's negative RD times its perpendicular distance, which is from here all the way to point A, which is 1, 2, 3 L's equals to zero if i simplify this i'll get rd equals to 3 p l divided by 3 l you see 3 l here and 3 l here i'll bring the p's on one side rd on the other side and this and this and this and this goes and i end up rd is equal to p if rd is equal to p and if I put the same P all the way to here, so I get this guy done, what will be RAYB? As you guessed, RAY will be equal to P as well. And it kind of makes sense because it's symmetric. So if one P is coming down, this should resist it, so it should be equal to P. If another P is coming down, this should resist it and it should be equal to that. Again, they are equal but in opposite directions. So one of the unknown done, another unknown done, another unknown done. So the first step of the trusses was to figure out what are the reactions depending on the support situation. And as you can see, we use all three equations of equilibrium because we didn't consider it as a truss, we considered it as a solid body. And we just considered what was the reactions and what was the applied loads. Now that I have some of the unknowns found, now I can start figuring out what are the points inside every single one of these elements, like the example that we solved uh, during the lecture as well. So let's keep this here. And remember, we are following method of joints. So, in method of joints, we go one by one. I will start with joint A from here. So, I draw joint A. This is joint A. I have a force like this coming out toward AB. So, I call it force AB. This will be this point coming out. And as you can see, I have a force coming inside, which will be from F to A. Let's draw it, call it FA. Note that I'm just putting F for my forces. You can put P if you're happier. I figured out that RAX is zero over here. So I'll forget about it. But RAY was equal to P. So I'll put RAY, which is equal to P. Doesn't this look kind of similar to what we solved in um, the example in the lecture? 
Remember, this was joint A. Yes, so let's solve it. I have two equations. Now I have only two equations because we are dealing with actual forces. We are now inside the truss. So summation of all forces in x direction. This is an inclined force. So let's make its members over here and over here. I need an alpha here. I need an angle over there. This alpha is this alpha. Yeah. If you remember in maths, it's the same alpha. I'm just drawing this force here. So this will apply with that angle. Now, a trick is, if this angle is L and this angle is L, this dimension of the edge is L and this dimension of the edge is L, can I conclude that these two are alpha if this is 90 degrees? Yes. So if you remember, if you have such a case, which is 90 degrees here, and this is equal to this, for sure, these two will be alpha and alpha because summation of all the angles inside the triangle is 180 degrees. If I minus it from 90, I have another 90 left and I'll just divide it 45, 45. Yeah. So going back to this, I know what my alpha is and I'll just call it alpha. Really doesn't matter. I'm not replacing it with any numbers. So this component of this inclined force will be FFA times cosine of alpha. And similarly, the other one will be FFA sine of alpha. So can I now write this down? Any force in x direction only in this joint will say F F A times sine of alpha is equal to zero. And I have this as well. So F A B minus F F A sine of alpha equals to zero. So this force and this force, any force in x direction. From this, I can conclude that F A B equals to F F A sine of alpha. One of my forces is done. F A B, F A B, this force. And if the result of this is positive, it means that this tension sign that I have um, assumed in the beginning is correct. What is left is the other one. So let's do for the other side. Summation of all forces in y direction equals to zero. And I consider this direction as positive. From this, I can conclude that this guy is equal to this guy. There are just two forces, this component and this. Can I say RA is equal to F, FA, cosine of alpha. And I know that RAY is P. So I can even say F, FA is equal to P over cosine of alpha. F, FA is known as well now. So as long as I know the angle, I can uh, actually calculate it because I know what is P. This is done. This is done. Perfect. So as you can see, I just took one joint, which has uh, at least two, uh, sorry, at most two unknowns because I already have calculated this reaction and this reaction. The only unknowns for this point was this and this. And I start calculating it. Because I have two equations of equilibrium, I can easily figure out what are the unknowns of me. Now that I have known, if I go to another uh, joint, let's say, let's go to joint F. So now joint F. Let's bring it out and put it here. This is join F. I have one force coming from EF. So F 
EF. I have one force going outward, FFB. FFB. And then I have another force coming from A to F, which before I have called it FA. So to not get confused, I'll just still call it FFA. And it's known to me, it's P over cosine of alpha. If I draw the components of this, and let's say this is alpha, anyhow, the angle over here is the angle that this force is applied, will be FFA cosine of alpha and another component of it f f a sine of alpha i just made this inclined force into two dimensions can i simply now start writing the summation of all forces summation of all forces in x direction equals to zero this is my positive direction looking at this i can say it's this force and this force so f e f equals to f f a times cosine of alpha so do i know f f f f a yes so if i just replace it here f e f is known as well now let's look at summation of all forces in y direction equals to zero considering bottom to top as positive it's just this force and this force so I can conclude F F B, which is the new force that I'm figuring it out, is equal to F F A sine of alpha. And I already know what is F F A. So if I put P over cosine of alpha, F F B is actually equal to P. So now. Look, what I know. I know what is the value of this. I know what is the value of this member. And I know what is the value of this member. And if I replace these value, these uh, parameters with a value like 5, 4, 3, and I get a positive sign, then the assumption of whether they are under tension or compression is correct. If not, then that member is not under compression or tension. But still, I have so many other members to go. So let's carry on. Let's go to joint E. Joint E. Joint E. 